I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean this hammer in here, the hammer. Hang on. I want to grab a battery or two. Or three. Or two. You can just make a squeaking noise. Like a... Like a door squeaking open noise. I heard it too. Now watch. Stop. Stop. I just set that up there. Okay, don't worry about it. It all started with a video game. Where are you? Where are you? I'm right Where behind you. you. Oh I'm my right behind you. I'm okay, right behind okay. You. Oh! <laughs> During the 2020 <laughs> pandemic lockdown, I invited my buddy T to join me in Phasmophobia, a heart elevating ghost hunting experience from Kinetic Games. What came next was a fan favorite on my Twitch channel Phasmophobia with the Phil Rossi Scream Team. And sure, we had fun. But as we started to see the end of the pandemic, I got a call from Phil. How would you like to do this for real? And now, here we are. Just two dads living their best life while investigating the afterlife. The Crescent State Correctional Institute, or Crescent SCI, located near Crescent, Pennsylvania, originally opened in 1916 as the Crescent Tuberculosis Sanatorium. Located in the Allegheny Mountain Range, the sanatorium was considered ideal for treating tuberculosis due to abundance of fresh air. The administration building, still standing today, was built in the European style with gargoyles on the tower and the crests of Scottish clans cut into the sandstone as a nod to the center's patron, steel tycoon and philanthropist, Andrew Carnegie. With the introduction of new drugs and treatments for tuberculosis and the demand for sanatoriums declining, the Crescent Tuberculosis Sanatorium was incorporated in December 1956 and rechristened as the Lawrence F. Flick State Hospital, run by the Department of Public Welfare to treat the mentally ill and mentally incapacitated. Tuberculosis patients already in residence refused to be transferred, concerned for their physical health. The Lawrence F. Flick State Hospital remained in operation until December 1982 when jurisdiction over the center was transferred to the Bureau of Corrections. Construction and renovation of Crescent State Correctional Institute began in 1984. Its design of new housing units for inmates, prototypes for future institutions across the Commonwealth. Crescent SCI opened in 1987, becoming a medium security correctional facility for men, housing serial killer Joseph Callinger, who lived out the remainder of his life until 1996. The facility expanded for women, and in 1998, SCI Crescent opened the Secure Treatment Unit, housing 50 of the most violent juvenile offenders between the ages of 16 and 21. It was already an overcrowded facility, with 802 inmates when it was designed to hold 499. Throughout their years as a correctional facility, SCI Crescent was still accepting and taking care of medical patients. There was little to no segregation of criminal offenders and those struggling with mental illness. This led to many incidents, both documented and undocumented, of verbal and physical abuse, sexual assault, and torture. In 2013, a federal investigation concluded that Crescent was warehousing mentally ill patients in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day. Inmates got worse under such conditions. Wardens were also found to use excessive force. One patient in solitary committed suicide in 2013. Crescent was shut down soon thereafter and left abandoned, its cell blocks, isolation wards, and other structures falling rapidly into disrepair. 
Today, those venturing past Crescent's rusting gates find a space frozen in time. Many of the rooms, offices, and cells looking as if staff and inmates simply picked up and left. Stories coming from the 326-acre facility atop Crescent Mountain tell of disembodied voices, apparitions, and shadow figures wandering the dark halls of the 40 buildings on its campus. In 2021, the pioneering television show Ghost Hunters held their own investigation here. Even Jason Hawes and the TAPS team experienced events that could not be easily explained. This two-part episode of Old Spirits is Phil and T's experience of 12 hours at a medium security prison and asylum for the mentally ill. We're just gonna jump on in. I I wanna I wanna kick it off with with this clip right here. So I wanted to start with this because this is one of my favorite memories from Crescent SCI. We're, we are diving in, we are surrounded by solitary confinement. It is cold, the wind is howling, and you lean over to me and go, we're doing it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I think that's in that moment, <clears throat> it's when it really dawned on me, we had been kind of going through the setup and yep. the tour and everything and, yep. and just kind of really, the moment hit where we were set yeah. and we were getting into just the investigation us. and it hit me in that moment yeah. of just, wow, this is a huge jump for us. Yeah, so what got us here? This was actually your brainchild, I remember. You made this happen. So I originally <clears throat> found out about Crescent through Tina I was looking for places fairly close by that we could go mm -hmm. and it looked like an incredible spot and then uh, West Virginia Paranormal posted uh, something about a Crescent investigation. Now you had them on Don't Turn Around, right? Yep, that's okay. right. Yep. Okay. That's right. Uh, Mr. Johnson, who's lead investigators, uh, he was on Don't Turn Around and they had been out there a few times and at this, at this point it had just been opened up to the public for investigations. This is brand new territory for, for paranormal investigators. Yes, yeah. which is what made it so exciting too. I mean, for me, this was, and I remember saying this to you just before I passed out in the car, um, that the 12 hour investigation that we did was almost like a boot camp. It was yeah. a, a hardcore boot camp for anybody that would be interested in doing this sort of thing. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a, uh, a, a first step or an introduction to paranormal investigation because it was the real deal. Yeah. I mean, from beginning to end, right. you are, you're committed. You're in it. You're in it. You are, you are in it. Now, I thought it would also be a good, a good, uh, a good starter clip would be this one right here that I've been, I, I know it's been the, the debate of many, many a paranormal investigator, but I think this one kind of sums up the OSI policy concerning orbs. Let's 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 watch the screen. <laughs> let's just watch the screen. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. that's not there's, orbs. There's, there's a lot visually happening. <laughs> there. I don't think any of it is uh, spirit related. I don't think any of this is. This is why when people when people post again chat, I got paranormal My evidence eyes. on tape. And it's ghost orbs? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really buying it. I'm not buying it anymore after Crescent. That was dust. A hundred percent. There is we're gonna There's be a, a lot of dust at Crescent. Yes. A lot of dust at Crescent. A lot of dust, a lot of paint chips. Please, God, no asbestos. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. Taking that one on faith. <laughs> yeah. Our first stop was the solitary confinement. And so we march our way through. So let's set the scene. Yeah. We are at the tail end wow. of a... We could not have asked for a perfect night yeah. for this thing. A major nor'easter had passed through the area. If you're not from the East Coast, a nor'easter is basically a uh, fall, winter, almost a cyclone-type activity. Low pressure, rainy. 
So there was a ton of fog and just drizzle. And so we're marching through the darkness to find the buildings that we're going to yeah. be investigating because it's a huge campus. Uh, I'm, there's more than 17 buildings out there. Mm -hmm. And these buildings just loom up out of the fog as you approach them. And straight, that already... Straight out of a John Carpenter yeah, film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, either that or Silent Hill. Yeah. Either oh, way, it's... Oh, that's right. I remember. We were walking through, and I went, whoa. Yeah. And Phil was like, don't you do that, man. Don't you yeah. do that. And I was like... Yeah, so we <laughs> start off in solitary, right. where some of the inmates were kept in their confinement, in their cells, for, tw for 23, 23 hours, hours a day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, quite a few of those inmates had you know certain... Uh, mental um, health issues. It was not a pretty scene, and that's I mean, it has a lot to do with why Crescent was closed down yeah. in 2013. But we come into solitary. There's no electricity anywhere on the nope. entire campus, so it is dark. It is. It, it is, is cold. Pitch dark. It is and cold. Uh, we come in there with just our little flashlights, beating away the shadows, yeah. and, and we get set up and we get ready to roll. So this first clip is actually a compilation. This first clip is uh, is the value. We're going to talk a little bit about the value of gear because this is one of the only clips that I could provide for this particular investigation because right. you'll hear in the original audio this, um, and I even have it captioned, there is a buzzing sound which is coming from my camera because at this investigation site, in this 12-hour investigation, my camera conked out within the first two. And that was a bit of a heartbreaker. Yeah. That was a bit of a heartbreaker. Um, the thing about gear, when you hear about, when you, when you see um, the professionals with all the different cameras that they have and with all the different recorders that they have, and you wonder, are they wasting their money? Is that are, overkill? Are, is that overkill? Are they just making more work for themselves checking each camera? The answer is yes, they are making more work, but they're also covering their bases. Right. Because had it not been for Phil's camera, we would have had no visual evidence whatsoever. Yeah. And so redundancy is really important. In this. Absolutely. And that's what brings us to this particular clip. Are you still here? There's the buzzing in the camera, which was its, its death throes, if you will. Remember, that was the thing I thought was the alarm yeah, from the TWA. TWA. But while I was recording with this camera, I did have my H4 running. And we're going to get to that. We're leaving in a little while anyway. Yeah. So if you had nothing to say, that's fine. So here's the H4N on. Are you still here? Listen, you'll actually hear something in the, in, in the distance. Again, this is part of the process. Now that we have the original audio, I'm going to go back. I'm going to run this audio through Adobe Audition, and the next part of this clip is going to is going to show you what I picked up. Yeah. And the whispering was about the bang. This was our first residual haunting because we didn't hear, you know, it wasn't until I, I, I enhanced the audio that I, I heard the sound of the door slamming. I yeah. heard the alarm. And that's the importance right there of the <clears throat> of the uh, of, of the redundancy of equipment. You've got to have, you got to, and just in case, like for example, with my, with the audio on my camera, I had that odd intermittent buzzing yeah, sound. Yeah. While some of those bangs could have been residual, I mean, there were definitely a couple times where we did hear bangs. And yes. again, it was, you know, unclear. I, I always take bangs with a, with a grain of salt, but uh, there were a few moments where we did hear what sounded like cell doors opening and closing, which maybe we didn't capture, but still, it, I mean, it was just such a wild 
experience. It was. It was everything. It was fantastic. For us, it was everything you would want an experience of a investigation at a former correctional institute to be. Now, being this, being the uh, resident skeptic between the two of us, that's him. That's me. Um, that's not to say that I am. I am skeptical. <laughs> he's he's critical. That's what I like to think of us. We're not skeptical so much as we're critical. Right. But one of the things that I would say is that because of the weather, we had to be very careful because a lot of times there were we were so Crescent from the geography point of view, Crescent is on top of a mountain. Right. And so we were getting gusts of wind, but the gusts of wind didn't sound like they had slamming doors behind no. them. No. So there was a real and we're, we're going to talk, though, about the environment a little later. Um, we're still in solitary in this clip. And. Um, but I was I, I was really impressed with some of the stuff that, that Phil caught and brought to my attention in his video and audio, like this moment right here. So I'm coming upstairs, man. And I'm coming towards the device here. I'm just gonna show you real quick how it works. That's all you gotta do. You don't even have to touch it. So I have to get close to it. That's good. That's good. That's good. So now, throughout the um, throughout the different clips that you're going to see tonight, uh, these particular clips, you'll notice that sometimes I'm having conversations with people. It's because I was live streaming on Twitch the full investigation and that was the thing that was a, an extra bonus of the night so that voice yes that unintelligible yeah. voice that that voice i was trying to figure out what it said but whatever it said maybe i don't want to know what yeah, it, well, it wasn't a shuffle it wasn't a foot it wasn't <laughs> no. any of the noises of the stairs because again when we listen to this stuff and when we review the evidence i really try to do my best to learn the audio characteristics of the space yeah and i heard nothing else this like place that particular was, voice this place was cool I mean, in that opening clip where I played it for fun, yeah. you could hear, I didn't alter that clip in any way, shape, yeah. or form. You could hear how, it was almost, it was one of those places where the silence was loud. Well, yeah, and so you get to learn the sounds your feet are making on the stairs or moving over the debris on the floor uh, after, you know, just a pass through, <laughs> I think I had 700 minutes of audio yeah. from this investigation yeah. or something ridiculous like that. But uh, yeah, that, voice definitely gave me the chills a little bit when I heard it. Again, mm -hmm. I didn't have to know what it was saying. I just knew that it was just a creepy ass voice. <laughs> <laughs> and and whether it was welcoming us there or not, the, the, the company of this particular space, they weren't necessarily the warmest of people. Right. Let's yeah. be honest with that. So um, <clears throat> now this is another, another really good example. One of the things that I, I'd like to see in this episode is that we talk a little bit about the value of the gear that we were traveling with. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've already put up a list of what it was that we that we brought yeah. here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, there were no new additions. We just no, had we, we just had an extra. I remember we had an extra REM pod. Oh, you know what? There was new gear. <clears throat> the Which ten dollar three pack of motion lights. Oh, the things that have the chimes. Yeah. No, 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 no. That wasn't new. Oh, that wasn't new. No, the motion lights, the little, the, oh, the, the stairwell motion lights yeah. that were themselves that were lighting up. Yeah, I, I, have, yeah. I have some fun reactions to those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were popping off left and right in one of the later properties we're going to cover in part two. And they did go off several <laughs> times while we were in solitary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I had it back in one of the cells, cell four. Yeah. And, and then, of course, you, you hear that, 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 that chime. That chime was also one of your, uh, yep. one of your motion sensors as well. Now, in this particular clip, though, um, there, there, there's, a, there's a great story behind this clip, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this camera in here, so I can go over it. Hang on. I wanna grab a battery or something. This also gives an indication of how dark it is. Yeah. <laughs> or two. Did you just make a squeaking noise? Stop. I just set that up there. Okay. So you heard a scream. I heard to a me, scream. To me, I heard a scream. it sounded metallic, like a door being pulled open. 
The reason why I have it down as a screen. Okay, tell me why. It's because I picked up the sound too. Okay. <laughs> and this is the beauty of having multiple devices going. You had that screen on, were you using the EvaStar during this? Uh, I think that clip actually came from the EvaStar. So you had it on the EvaStar. Mm -hmm. You had it on the on the video track. On the video, yep. And as I was, uh, I was getting the captions ready for, for this particular clip, I was reviewing some of my H4 audio just to see if there was any EVPs. And this was one that I had set aside. Okay, okay. And I listened to it over and over and over again. Yeah. And I was like, that's not a door, that's a screen. Oh boy. <laughs> that's up. <laughs> that's up. So, but but that's but that's that's the thing that I think we we really took away from this was the value of having those redundancies in place. Mm -hmm. I had my H4, you had your Evistar, yeah. and we had at least one camera working yeah. that had solid audio. And 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 I know we got a ton of content to cover, but just to touch on briefly. I heard that with my ears. Right. Hence, not not an EVP, but rather a disembodied voice. If you mm -hmm. truly believe it was a, a scream and not a, uh, a door, but either way, it was audio phenomena that I heard at the time. Going back to one of the things that we talk about in one of the previous Five Minute Paranormals, mm -hmm. is that the only disembodied voices that I've been hearing have been in some of our later episodes, or some of our later investigations, like when we were at Linville Manor mm -hmm. and uh, of course Gettysburg mm -hmm. when we caught the whisper in, yeah. in the basement of yeah. Jenny Wade house. But I, maybe I was just keyed up. I, it, I could have been because we were, this was, this was the first hour of a 12 hour investigation. A lot, a lot of stimuli, <laughs> a lot going on. And again, you know, we've, it's, we've said it so many times on here the ability to be present in the moment opens up more possibilities of what you're going to experience. And sometimes it's if you sometimes you're just not going to be able to be a hundred percent there. So these next two clips, um, I'm I'm just going to call this the REM pod saga. The REM pod, Papa Palooza. <laughs> yeah, because celebration. Man, you, talk, you talk about you talk about Papa Palooza. This thing was popping and locking, and this is one of my this this is these two clips are are probably some of my favorites from Solitary because watch this I love I love watching your reaction to this. So I was convinced that you were setting it up. I don't remember the REM pod being this active at TWA. I don't think it was. No, this actually was probably until we went to Jenny Wade. Right. Was the most action I had seen yeah. on the REM pod. Yeah. And this for Crescent was the most active it was on the entire. This was the only location where it went off. Now here's a, here's a question. You did a five. I know we're doing a lot of references to five minute paranormals, but as you can attest, we ran a lot of them. Um, we did a, a review, and what I was curious about with this, is it possible to set off a REM pod from underneath it, or or is the field only around where the uh, the antenna is? I mean, I would imagine maybe the field extends downward, a fraction beneath it, right? Well, you obviously want to set it off. But here's the thing, it, it's, it only extends so far. Right. I mean, it's it's... It's technology powered by a nine volt battery and, and you're, you're a full, antenna. And it's a full story above you. Yeah, it's a full story above yeah. you. That's the other thing. And, and later, and I'm not sure if we have it in the clip. Oh, it's but coming. I walk multiple times. I walk back and forth past the REM pod, like literally stepping over it, 
and it doesn't go off because I had the range set as narrow as possible. And as well. in this case, the REM pod isn't even letting you go by it. This is a long clip, but, but it's so worth it. Going so worth it. Like. So there's the motion sensor exactly. back there. Yep. The back there. Okay, so I'm coming up. Now look at how far you are from there. Yeah. And that's, you gotta be right up on no. it. Nice cut. Remember last time I walked right by that sucker? Yeah, the, you, you, you sent this to me today. Can you do that so again? So I've got, I've got two angles from this. I love this. Don't be shy. That was, that was great. That was probably the most I've seen anyone be able to light that up. So uh, you are very talented, very talented. Now I'm gonna walk by it. No, you're not. <laughs> the hell you are. <laughs> you don't want me to come by it or you ex <laughs> Oh, yeah. I just heard, I just heard a, yeah, I heard a sound from one of the cells yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. Cell four just lit up too. Your thing's going off over there, my friend. Oh, okay. And remember, I was having problems with Simon that night. Yeah. But you weren't having any problems with your REM pod. See, you know, it gets stronger when I step away. Okay, I mean, that is just nuts. Warming up a little bit. <laughs> Warming up. <laughs> it's like, yeah. All right, I'm going to go back downstairs. <laughs> it's still, it's just <laughs> raging. You really have something to say up there, don't you? Uh, that was... Yeah, but we had the K2 going off, the REM right. pod going off, right. the motion light going right. off. Right, yeah, yeah. It, solitary was, um, you could feel the walls closing in after we'd been there for what felt like, it felt like several hours. We'd only been in there for an hour and a half, hour and yeah. 45 minutes. Yeah. I, I remember thinking for a very brief moment, it was a really big space, but it just felt like the walls were closing in after a while. Yeah. It really, it really yeah. was. And then we moved to D block. So again, you know, paint the scene. What was it, you know, when we when we headed out here? So D block was again one of the more modern structures mm -hmm. on the campus. And once again, we're trudging through the fog and through the rain to this big, very institutional looking building, which yeah. is basically what you would envision any prison cell block to look like from the outside. Now, I gotta ask you, be honest with me. At any time when we walked into that main area with the with the the, the stairs going up to the second level of, of cells and the tables, at any time did you think, oh my God, I have actually stepped into phasmophobia? Yeah, oh, right away. <laughs> when, we walked, when we walked into D block, it was it was the map. It was it, it, it was, was kinetic the, games. It, it was, was the it was the map. What started us yeah. on this adventure? Uh, so okay, so mm -hmm. in this particular clip, now you sent me this clip, and I got very excited about it at first, and I'll, I'll explain why at first, and I'll go ahead and play what we got here. So so. Sorry. Now we'll defend it to the death. I'm sure. I'm sure, but you got to hear me out. But yeah, that's what. Uh, So I listen to this repeatedly. I listen to this repeatedly, and you're right. <clears throat> it does because we're, we're. I I know that in this moment we are sassing, we are sassing the ghosts pretty hard. That is not to be confused with taunting. No, we were not sassing taunting. and taunting are two very different beasts. Two very different beasts. But I'm going to play this clip again, and I'm playing it with the native audio. With the native audio. Native audio being off of the off of the video player. 
off, of the, the, video, off, the, off of the video camera. I see. Yeah. Okay. And this is what I heard. Uh, I mean, it's true. But yeah, it's like the... That's what, that's, that's what's up, uh, you know, I'm talking about what I experienced. So you step, you step on so I stepped on something. Wow. I did hear I'm that. I'm telling you, I, I'm that gonna, was you. Time out. No, I did. <laughs> time out. I did. I did hear that on the video. Right. I did hear that on the video, but on the Eva Star, the H4, and the H1, really heard the bite me. I, 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 I can't get behind it, and here's why. Here's why we're talking about environment. The problem with an environment like Crescent, like any of these properties that you talk about on mm -hmm. Don't Turn Around and otherwise, is that they are slowly deteriorating. Oh, yeah. They're slowly yeah. falling apart. Yeah, and there's debris everywhere. There's debris. And we're crunching on stuff as we're exactly. walking by. And I don't dispute that at all, I, which is why I went through every single recording before I sent you that. I, I could have used and that. I should've, and I should have stripped should've, the video audio. You, you should have also, <laughs> you should've also sent me the H1 and the H4 and say, and now we have learned a lesson about when we move forward, because I would I will argue that that, that, was, that was just, because this didn't happen just here. It also happened in the woodworking room. Yes. And absolutely. it also happened uh, in here again. There were several times that you sent me something that said, hey T, listen to this, listen to this. And I would listen to it and I'd go, ooh, that is compelling. <laughs> then I would go back to the native audio. And and um, just to go back, I, I, um, I, will, uh, I will also talk about that scream. Mm -hmm. That scream I heard on two different yeah. sources and I heard it in the native audio, but it was not there. That was your foot breaking a piece of plaster. And, and just philosophically where I disagree <laughs> is... You know, just philosophically. The, you know, the $30 camera mic versus the, you know, what, $300 H4 and the $200 okay. H4. Of course, and of course. Better pick up. Star. But, <laughs> but perhaps we will come back around to this particular piece of evidence on a five minute paranormal. That would be and great. And break it down and then he'll be eating his breakfast cereal. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. No, you, I better be right about this. You better be right about this. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I just, this was, I knew you were going to get sensitive about that. Deep I'm not sensitive. I know. Oh, oh no. Not you're sensitive. not You just threw down on me on camera. Let me, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Is, is it potentially, is it, is it not a voice? Very likely. Is it definitely my foot on debris? Definitively? Not necessarily. Thank you for this final episode of Old Spirit. We hope you've been enjoying this adventure. We're done. No, okay. Because I think that brings up a good point. It does. You have to you at least you got to ask these tough questions, and you have to be able to entertain both possibilities. Yeah. That don't that you don't have evidence for either. Right? But I tell you what. I tell you what. Let's throw this out to you all. What do you hear? Do you think that that was the pickups distorting the sound enough to make it sound like an EVP? Was it an EVP slipped in somewhere? Because I know you've talked about that before. About yeah, they sometimes, do. sometimes EVPs, they do slide in. Yeah, they slide mm -hmm. into the sounds. Or was was my estimation right? And it should have been on the native audio, and and it was Phil's foot. I w we would love to hear it. Make sure to drop something in the comments about that. We'd love to get your opinion. Now this clip, however, this clip, I'm not contesting at all. It's so windy. We're not sure if we're going to get it. So if you can make a little more noise for us, or just go up to that red light next to the slopes, go ahead and do that. Right. That was, yeah. That was that was instantaneous, and that's again that was the and you see that was the native audio. You would you had sent me some of the audio as well, but because of the echo and the pickups in the Eva Star, it was really hard for me to pick that out. But on the native audio on the camera, that no popped. And I will say, for most uh, most uh, external mics you buy for cameras are going to be unidirectional. Yes, which is is certainly beneficial if your audio source is is directly in directly the, in the front plane of, of that microphone. 
which is again why it's so important to have multiple devices. Again, yeah, and again, that that is one of the. I think that was one of the things that we we reassured ourselves that all the redundancies that we were piling on, all the recorders, uh, you know, all the different the, the different devices that we were bringing, it all was justified yeah. based on based on what we were able to bring back from Crescent. I think what we were really fighting against the worst was was the echo yes the echo yes. was pretty was pretty rough. and then i'll go back to the echoey audio there you go and i'll be like see it wasn't my foot it's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna let that go you're not gonna let that go i see how this is mom do you see what he's doing to me i know you watch you see what he's doing to me this is what i have to put up with just like in this clip right here like in this clip right here because i hate it when he's right <laughs> <laughs> so there's the echo. I can't tell at all what you're seeing. Now, that's what I heard. I heard a groan. Yeah. Did you actually pick up something off that? I no? heard a groan. Okay. It was like a groan or just a weird sound that was definitely not either of us because again that different kind of level of, of reverb on it there's not as much echo on it it sounds like it was close to whatever the audio source was yeah but it just it sounded like a groan or a moan yeah that's what I heard but, but I, you know and th this was something that as we're watching this it reminded me of something uh, you know when you were talking about with the onboard microphone on a video uh, camera don't necessarily rule out that microphone don't rule it out at all. I've caught some of my best EVPs on that. My first EVP microphone. was caught on a video mic on the on the cheap camera. On the actual that camera quit. microphone, right? On now. the on the on yeah. the cheap camera that quit on me there. Yeah. That was where I caught my first one at Belgrove. Yeah, you don't know what's gonna pick up what. At exactly. the end of the day, you don't know. You, you don't know. You, when I went through my audio, I was picking up very little. But apparently things were busy in cell block D. Z's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's just you guys and us. That was one of those late night discoveries. Uh huh. Where I, and I had, and of course, I was in the weeds of doing the review. And I had to listen to it multiple times. And I listened to I it multiple really times. But I didn't really want to listen to it multiple times after midnight, <laughs> but I was. Because that's what I do for you, my friend. Oh, oh and, uh, and here. Of you. I was going to say, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. H hang on. Hang on. This, right. is, this coming from the guy who was insisting that all these EVPs that he missed, that I caught, it was because in... Sitting here, he basically said it was buffering. So don't don't oh, even. I, I didn't miss him. <laughs> I just didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is again one of these things that I listened to over and over again, and I said, "Oh man, I I'm glad I didn't hear that in real time. I'm glad I didn't hear this in real time." But here you go. I know what you got. Oh no, they're not done. <laughs> Do I need to play that again? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you gotta play that one again. Yeah, yeah. This this one this one's worth the the the, the second the second playback. I'm not gonna say anything, just sit back and let the let the magic happen, baby. Freaky business. <laughs> and again, that's me talking to chat, saying, hey, you know, meanwhile, I have apparently the the whatever was there was saying, don't be like that. This is why we review. 
because you're trying you're trying to keep you're trying to keep your senses open. You're trying to keep yourself uh, alert of the space of the environment, and there's going to be stuff that you miss. Absolutely. And and that's what I think is it happens in this clip. Now, Phil, this is your clip. Um, it is presented in several different speeds, similar to what we did in Gettysburg when mm -hmm. I slowed down the, uh, the, the orb that we yep. didn't quite understand. So what can you tell me about this clip that we're about to watch? So this was captured with uh, my body cam. Okay. Um, we had just been back on the A, a side, the A wing, the a -wing right. of cell block D. Right. And then we were meandering our way in. And as I was reviewing the POV cam footage, you know, I'm kind of panning, you know, I'm turning right. toward the columns, the upper columns. And that should be where we pick this up. Yep. Where you want to look is that top lit area in the corner, or the top right. And don't worry, Phil's going to replay that yeah. at a slower speed. So you see the column in the center of that lit area and then something pokes out. It actually leans out. Yeah. It actually, you see it lean out. And Phil went even so far as to... And as you to, really see it yeah. lean out too, that's the thing. He actually zooms in. I'm getting chills just watching yeah. this. And, it, and it's darker than the column. And, and I went on ahead and ran this through Premiere just so you could see, just so you could uh, get a little more detail. This is where it's at its, at its height. And there you are. Leans out once, leans out twice. And the third time right there, Third right? time. And no, then- I feel like that then, last no, time. Then when it comes back, when the camera comes back, and you just gotta wait for it, but when the camera starts panning back, it's, really see it lean out there right there yep <laughs> and it's there for you know a little fraction it's there fraction. it's it's there it's there long it's, enough that you that you can't not see it yeah and so we watched this clip over and over and over i yeah. want i looked at every angle that I have of that area <laughs> through all my video over right. and over and over right. to try to see if there's anything behind it that could have cast that shadow, any debris or anything that from a different angle looked like it could have been moving outward based on my motion, but I couldn't I couldn't find anything that could explain well, the, that the, shadow. The light sources that were up there basically were emergency lights. No, 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 those are, I've had set my IR lights up there. Oh, you had set your those IR lights IR up there. Okay, so yeah, there were no, your lights there were no there. lights in there at all, other than the ones that oh we brought God, in. Right, yeah. I yeah. Other totally than the ones forgot we that. In. Okay, so, th so that changes that even more. Yeah. Because whatever was there, it was, it was literally leaning out. Yeah. And this is our first, this is, this is our first shadow person. At least in my critical look at this footage, there was something there. Yeah. And where we're gonna leave off with, with Crescent is that this is just the beginning. And in the yeah. next episode, we're going to be taking you to the hospice and to the administration building, and then we're gonna talk about the takeaways. Now we've been talking about takeaways throughout, yeah. and I think you, you, should, you should expect that. But, um, this is the biggest investigation we've ever done, so we didn't want to try to make one gigantic mammoth episode. No, we don't want to rush any aspect of it. No, we don't. But we do want to hear from you. We want to know, what do you hear in the audio? What did you see in this footage that Phil caught? Did he capture a shadow, or was that just a trick of the optics that we're trying to fill in the blanks? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, this time I am siding with you, Phil. I, I, I do think you caught something there, and it just adds to the weirdness of Crescent. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much for watching this, part one of our 12-hour visit at Crescent SCI. If you are enjoying Old Spirits, make sure to like and subscribe and enable notifications so that you get notified whenever we put up new content. Make sure to follow us on TikTok. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, and of course, Make sure to leave us comments in these videos because yes, we are gonna reply. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the field.